Okay, so here they give us the graph of this equation, y equals the absolute value of x, it's an absolute value function, right, and there it is. And they want to know which diagram could represent a graph of the equation when y equals a, absolute value of x, when a is between negative 1 and 0. So y is equal to a times x, right, and here a they're saying, when they say it's between negative 1 and 0, Here's 0, here's negative 1. They mean a is some value in here, not equal to 0 or 1. And it's some negative fraction, like negative 1 half or 1 third. So I want to pull up uh, the program I have here, Grapher. Oops. I'm going to pull up the program Grapher. So if I pull up the program Grapher, um, where you can just plug in different graphs, let me show you what the absolute value function looks like as we change it. So. Here's the absolute value of x. Now, if the value of a, which is the number in front here, is 2, right, the graph gets narrower. If it's 20, it's, the slope is very steep. So you can imagine if the slope was like 0.5, it would be a very wide function. If it was 0.2, even wider, 0.1. And, and what's happening here, 0.01, is we're lowering the slope, so we're lowering the rate of change. But here, we don't have a positive, we have a negative. So if I inverse, right, the absolute value function by multiplying it by a negative, Right? It essentially flips upside down. Here, A, though, is a fraction. So you can, let's combine the two ideas. When I multiplied by a fraction, I slowed the rate of change. When I inverted the function, it kind of went upside down. So I'll combine those two ideas. I'm going to multiply by negative 0.5 to get a sense. So you go upside down and widen. Right? It's not going to be anything narrow like, let's say, negative, let's say, 10. Right? That would be a very steep absolute value inverted graph. So here are choices, and there are four that I block some of them out. The first one, this is probably, you know, the same function, but if a was a fraction, right, if we slow that slope down. But here, we've inverted and right, widened the function. So this is our, this is the graph of our function. And it's not, I think, we don't have to go into too much about why this is happening. I encourage you instead to pull up some graph program. This is Grapher on the Mac, but there are so many out there, so many free ones online. Uh, and, and play around the absolute function to think about why this might happen. Why does it make sense if I put the negative sign outside of the absolute value versus inside, right? Why does it invert things? If I put the negative value here inside the absolute value, it does make sense that it won't change. Like you want to think about that, right? Because negative or positive x, taking the absolute value of it always leaves you with a positive result. Put the negative on the outside, though, and you take the inverse of whatever the absolute value is. So you kind of invert the whole graph. And you can really have fun by adding values inside the brackets and then, whoa, wait a minute, you know, why does it make sense that adding 3 shifts my graph to the left? I'll leave that to you for now, but we can come back to that. Um, anyway, so I hope you had fun in this video. Thanks.